So good evening, everybody. Welcome to this life-changing workshop on stress management at workplace and how to have a work-life balance. Okay, I, I thank all of you for joining this work, uh, workshop from bottom of my heart. Before starting this workshop, I am going to launch a poll. Okay, so kindly participate in the poll. So I'm launching a poll. How many of you are having significant stress in workplace? Kindly participate in a poll. How many of you are having significant stress at workplace? Yes, I am stressed at workplace. No, I am not stressed at workplace. And third is third option is I don't know. Kindly participate in the poll. Okay, so 50% say yes, I am stressed at work, workplace and 50% says no, I'm not stressed at workplace. So I'm launching a second poll. How many of you have a work-life balance? So I'm la launching poll. So how many of you have a work-life balance in your life? Kindly participate in a poll. What? Yes, no, I don't know. Kindly participate in a poll. How many of you have a work-life balance? So I'm ending the poll, sharing the result. So 50% says yes. And 25% says no. And 25% says I don't know. Okay. So I'm stopping the poll. Uh, Francica has ra raised the hand. Okay, you can write in the chat box if you have anything, whether any problem or if I'm audible or visible, you can make use of this chat box to communicate. Okay, so what is today's learning object? So we are going to learn what is stress? What is a workplace stress? What are the causes of workplace stress? What changes occur in our body during stress? What are the diseases caused by stress? And how to assess whether you are stressed in your life? And various stress management techniques. So these are the learning objectives today. And those who want to take their health to the next level, then I'm going to share my community. So before starting this workshop, I would like to uh, give certain instruction, have a notepad and pen ready because what happens during workshop, you may have a lot of golden nugget, but at the end of workshop, you may forget. So if you find something useful and it is, can be implemented in your life. You can put it in your pen and paper and you, you can go through it later on as well. And if you have any questions, you can write in the question and answer session. I am gonna take these questions later on. So uh, let me introduce myself. I'm Dr. Sunil Sable. I'm a basically a pediatric neurologist. I'm also a stress management consultant, wellness coach and international bestseller author. I did my... Uh, MBBS from BJ Medical College and Sassoon General Hospital, Pune. I did my MD in Pediatrics from St. Jesus Medical College and KM Hospital, Mumbai. And I did a fellowship in Pediatric Neurology uh, from Warrior Children's Hospital, Mumbai. So I'm practicing as a Pediatric Neurologist, but I'm also a wellness coach as well. And my book, I've published a book on stress management, Oh Stress, Give Me a Break. And it has become an international bestseller. You can see this golden uh, batch has been given by the uh, Amazon. And recently I've published book, 17 Powerful Secrets to Manage Stress During Corona Pandemic. So I'm expert and love to do one-to-one -one coaching uh, for uh, various leaders to manage stress and uh, to achieve holistic health. I also conduct workshop for corporations and organizations. And I have a digital course on stress management as well. So if you want to have one-to-one -one coaching or work for a workshop for 
your organization, you can contact me on this uh, email. So we'll just start this uh, workshop on a stress management. We all know that everybody is stressed in their work, in their lifespan. It will change. Some days would be happy, some days would be stressed, some there would be mild stress, there may be moderate or severe stress. And everybody is stressed in their workplace. And in the research, it's found that 80% of the people working in the corporations or any organizations is having significant uh, stress. So what is this work-related stress? So work-related stress is when the people working in, in any organization is presented with the demands and pressure that is not matched to their knowledge or ability. So when there is a mismatch between knowledge and ability and the demand and pressure, then it can produce a stress. Stress occurs when employees feel that they have a little support from the supervisors and colleagues, as well as a little control over the work process. Okay. So this is also a cause of a stress at a workplace. Now there's always a confusion between the pressure and challenges and stress because pressure is always there, which will help us to keep alert, motivated and to complete our work. But when this pressure become excessive and pervasive, then it produced a kind of a stress which leads to various psychological and physical disorder. Okay, And when there is a less stress, then you're unmotivated, bored, and there is a pathy. So I'm launching a third poll. So what are the main causes of stress at the workplace? Poor work organization, poor work design, for example, lack of control over the work, poor management, unsatisfactory working condition, a lack of support from colleague and supervisor. So what are the main causes of stress at workplace? Kindly participate in a poll. What are the main causes of stress at workplace? Okay, I'm ending the poll, sharing the results. So 20% says poor work organization, 40% says poor work design, 60% says poor management, and 20% says lack of support from colleagues and supervisor. So let me see what are the causes of stress at workplace. Okay. So this, there are a lot of research on the stress in the workplace and they found that the causes may be related to the organizational level, the way the organization design job and work system and the way they manage it. So it may be because of the organization. Second, it may be because of the poor work design. For example, lack of control over the work process means people are not able to participate in the decision making. Third, maybe poor management. Fourth, maybe unsatisfactory working conditions. And next would be lack of support from the colleagues and supervisor. Okay. There may be a problem in a job content, means the job may be monotonous, there may be under uh, stimulation, meaningless, and lack of variety, which produce boredom. It may be related to workload or work pace. There may be too much of work, or there may be too little of work to do, and there may be time pressure to do certain things in a short period of time. It may be related to work hour. It, the work hour may be strict or inflexible, long and unsocial, unpredictable, and badly designed uh, shift system. And there may be a problem because of participation and control, it means lack of participation in the decision making, lack of, of control over the work process, pace, hours, method, and work environment. Okay. There may be a problem in the career development and status and pay means there may be job insecurity. There may be lack of promotional opportunity. There may be under promotions. There may be work of low social value, underpayment, unclear or unfair performance evaluation system, being over or under skilled job for uh, under skilled for the job. There may be a problem of workers' role in the organization, like unclear role, conflicting role, means interpersonal relation 
uh, ship problem like inadequate or inconsiderate and unsupportive supervision, poor relationship with the colleague, bullying or harassment and violence, or there may be isolated or solitary work. Okay, so and organization culture means poor communication from the higher authority, poor leadership, lack of behavioral rule, lack of clarity about the organizational objective, structure and strategy. And there may be work-life balance. Okay, So conflicting demands of the work and home, lack of support for the domestic problem at work, lack of support for the work problem at the home, or lack of organization rules and policy to support work-life balance. So these are the main causes of stress according to research. And I'm going to launch the fourth poll. How many of you think Corona pandemic has increased the stress level? Right? Yes, no, I don't know. How many of you think that the Corona pandemic has increased the stress level? So I'm ending the poll. So 83% of the people says yes, and 17% says no. Okay, so we all know that the corona pandemic has added fuel to the fire. And corona pandemic has changed the dynamic of human life. Millions of people have been affected by it. Millions of people have died. So many people have lost their job. And there is an atmosphere of stress, anxiety, and depression, and hopelessness all around. Okay, now there is a because of this corona pandemic, this work life imbalance has increased because people has to work from the home and then the distinction from work and the home life has been diminished. And because of the modern way of communication, you are supposed to keep in contact with your customer or your organization 24 by 7. So there is it has added fuel to the fire and it has led to the work-life imbalance. So because of this stress, there is a problem to the individual, there's a problem to the organization, there's a problem to the economy and there's a problem to the country and whole world. So excess stress cause physical and psychological disorder in a person, then it reduces the work performance because if person has stress, then he will how diseases he will not able to perform properly, their work performance will decrease, then it will have a consequences on the organization because if there is a decrease in performance, then there is, would be absenteeism, then there would be less performance, there is a cost added to the treatment of the diseases and because of the decreased performance. So it cost organization as well. And it is said that the chronic disorder like obesity, diabetes, heart disease, cancer, psychological disorder like anxiety and depressions are increasing exponentially all over the world. And it costs trillions of dollars to treat this disorder. So the important thing is we have to prevent this disorder rather than concentrating our attention to treat it. So this is a standard disclaimer. So what is stress? So write in the chat box, what do you mean by stress? So welcome Sue from Canada. Thank you, Dr. Sunil. I work at the pediatric hospital in Canada in Cardio and suffer from hemiplegic migraine. So personal connection in two ways, work and life. Good line of work. Thank you so much. So write in the chat box, what do you mean by stress? Let it be a interactive session. If it is interactive, then you are going to get a lot of things. Write in the chat box. What do you mean by stress? Yes, health effects, migraine, headache, gastrointestinal, feeling of big overwhelm with situation or combination of situation which hinder everything and makes it hard to focus. Absolutely. For me, stress is anything that keep me up at night that I'm unable to manage or mitigate. 
how we react to the situation. Thank you so much for the feedback. So stress is our body's mental, physical, emotional, behavioral reaction to any perceived demands and threat. And this terminology has been taken from a Latin word named the meaning of it, which is triple means tense. That's why tension and stress is used synonymously. Now stress is a constant, okay? Optimum stress is required for growth and development and optimum performance. So stress is not always bad. And the stress which increases our performance and growth, it is called as eustress. So I'm gonna explain with the help of this graph. On X axis, there is level of stress and there's on Y axis, there is a performance. You can see as the stress increase, the performance increases. And in this moderate level of stress, your performance is at optimal level. You are highly motivated, you are high energy and you are alert, okay? But as this stress persists for a prolonged period of time, then this performance decreases, and then you get a psychological and physical disorder. So less stress is a problem, more stress is a problem, optimum amount of stress is required. And I'm gonna discuss this with the help of a story. Once a teacher took children to the garden. The children were watching the birth of a butterfly. The caterpillar was coming out of the cocoon. As the caterpillar was coming out of the cocoon, its body was getting pressed between the sharp edges of the cocoon. The blood was oozing out from the body of the caterpillar. The caterpillar was under severe pain. One child couldn't witness this seen. He break open the cocoon, took out the caterpillar and put on the ground. He thought that he has helped that caterpillar. But after some time, this caterpillar died. When teacher came to know, he scolded the children, but told them, he told them that dear children, when the caterpillar was coming out of the cocoon, its body was getting pressed. It was under pain but it was very essential for its survival. Because during that process, the excess water in its body was getting expressed out so that its body was getting light and it would have become a butterfly. As you have bypassed this process, the excess water remained in its body and the caterpillar died and it couldn't become a butterfly. So dear friend, this stress is very essential. We have to undergo churning if we want to grow in our life, become successful. And those stress which increase our performance is called as ill stress, okay? Now less stress is a problem and more stress is a problem, okay? So I'd like to give an example. On a lighter note, once a delegation went to visit a mental asylum. Doctor was showing the delegates the condition of the inmates in the mental asylum. So they went into room number one. So there, there was one lady and she, she was in a very pathetic state. She was crying, she was hugging one photograph. The delegates asked the doctor, why is this lady become mad? The doctor said she was in love with a guy named Jack, but she couldn't marry the Jack. That's why she's become mad. Then they went into room number two. There, the lady was in a very agitated state. She was tearing one photograph and hitting the photograph with her shoes and sandal. The delegation asked the doctor, why she, this lady become mad? The doctor said, she married the same guy named Jack. Okay, so less stress is a problem, more stress is a problem. Optimum amount of stress is required for growth and development. And mind you, stress would be constant in life. There's only one place on this earth where there is no stress and that is a graveyard. From birth till the death, you will have stress in your life. The way you handle will determine how you live the life. And I'm gonna equip you the way to handle it effectively so as to lead healthy, happy and more fulfilling life. Now stress is idiosyncratic as well. A stress to one person may not be stress to other. For example, giving a lecture in front of people may be stressful to one person, it may be enjoyable to one. Climbing the mountain may be stressful to one person. It may be enjoyable to other person. So it depends upon the person's belief system, personality, locus of control, 
social support hostility okay for example when a company named atn atnt was shut down they found that those people who lost their job five few percent of the people died because of the stress because of the uh, lo uh, loss of the uh, losing their job but they found that 5 to 10 percent people also become successful in their other career so the condition was same they were fired because of the shutdown of the company but few people died and few people progressed so it depend upon person's belief system how they take the particular situation in demand whether they take it as a stress or they take it as a challenge so it depend upon the person's belief system and stress is increased because of the modern fast life the modern man is too busy and too stressed out to enjoy the life and children are not the exception the academic the pressure of academic excellence by the parents the force to excel in each and every aspect of life the expectation of parent that their children should come first has added a lot of pressure on the children's life the days where they should play laugh is replaced by attending various classes and studying okay and it has caused stress and stress related problem in children and to add fuel to the fire because of shutting down of the school it has caused a lot of problem because of the online classes to the children as well now what changes occur in our body during the stress now when our ancestor go to the jungle they used to come across a lion so what they used to do they used to either fight with the lion or they used to run away from the lion okay so this is called as fight and flight response so if any threat comes across ourselves we either fight with that threat or we run away or we freeze and during that process whatever changes occur in our body maybe a biochemical changes maybe a cognitive changes or behavioral changes it is called as fight and flight response so when you come across any threat the amygdala and limbic system get activated and it activate whole brain it activate the prefrontal cortex it activate the sympathetic nervous system it activate endocrine glands like hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis so a lot of hormones are secreted in our body like adrenaline noradrenaline cortisol and various physiological changes occur like increase in heart rate breath rate your muscle become tense blood pressure increases blood flow to the brain lungs heart muscle increases blood clotting mechanisms are activated so that you would be able to deal with the uh, challenging situation either to fight with that or you run away from that so this physiological changes is extremely essential to deal with the particular threat for example when our ancestors used to go to jungle when they used to come across the lion they used to either fight with it or they used to run away from it and during that process all this hormone were utilized and it was followed by relaxation response so they used to go to cave and they used to relax for a short period of time this fight and flight response this stress response is very essential for survival but mind you if this hormones and this physiological changes remain consistently elevated in our body if this response is consistently activated in our body it causes end organ damage it damaged each and every cell of our body and lead to physical physical and psychological disorders okay so the life has changed the modern man is under constant stress when he goes into workplace he is under the stress of doing his job completing his assignment the torture of his boss when he come at home there may be domestic problem when he travel there would may be a traffic there may be a portfolio if he watches the television then there is a bombardment of negative news corona news as if the world is going to finish so the stress response is constantly activated and he watches the social media and he watches other people posting happy picture and then he says that i am only having a stress and problem and everybody is happy so because of all this modern lifestyle this 
stress response is constantly elevated and when it is elevated it causes diseases so what are the diseases caused by stress so the stress causes you take any disorder and stress may be one of the major contributing factor for it the stress may cause heart disease high blood pressure stomach problem like ulcers respiratory problem we all know that stress decreases immunity so those who are under stress they have high chance of getting viral infection like corona infection in increase incidence of type 2 diabetes back problem headache migraine obesity arthritis cancer skin problem mental health problem we know that constant stress dampen the immune response so immune system problem and more susceptible to the infection child and partner abuse suicide homicide to dampen the effect of stress certain people may take the refuse of alcohol drug or uh, uh, other things tobacco use it may lead to violence and aggressive behavior accident sleep problem and sexual problem so how to deal with this stress okay so if you want to deal with any problem you have to diagnose first if you diagnose then it, you can treat it so first step in the management of stress is identify whether you are stressed or not introspection is extremely important so stand in front of mirror look at yourself what is your posture what is your abdominal size what is your waist size what is your shoulder what is your weight what is your waist to hip waist to hip circumference what is your body mass index close your eyes and introspect whether you are enjoying your life or just carrying out your days mechanically now there are two sets of people we as human being has a tendency to think in a extreme way certain people thinks that they are the only people on this earth suffering from the stress on the contrary certain people think that hey stress is not my cup of tea i don't get stressed by anything so i'd like to explain with the help of example once there was a church and there was a father he wanted to build an orphanage he used to request the people attending the prayer to donate for the orphanage but the people were not donating after one sunday prayer he declared he declared that today after the prayer i want each and every person in this hall to donate at least 1 dollar i know there are 100 people and i expect 100 dollar today and if a person in this congregation do not donate a dollar i would make his extra marital affair public so when he don he collected the donation he found that there were 99 dollar and there was one cheat and in that cheat it was written father please forgive me today i didn't get the money tomorrow i will give you 10 dollar but please don't make my name public okay so everybody is stressed the extent may be different the causes may be different but everybody is stressed on the other hand certain people think that hey stress is not my cup of tea on a lighter note once a 50 year old man went into to visit the doctor and said doctor please save my life doctor said what happened the person said my father has become mad he is 80 year old whole day he play in the bad turf he play with the toys the doctor said he is 80 year old he may be senile he may be having dementia so by bathing in the bathtub and by playing with the toy how it's going to affect you he said what are you talking about doctor he plays with my toys and he breaks it and because of that i am not able to play with the toys okay so this man was himself mad but he thinks that his father was mad okay so certain people thinks that there is no problem in themselves so introspect and find out whether you are stressed or not so figure it out your physical health and the most simple way to figure it out whether you are physically fit or not is waist to hip circumference we all know that the abdominal obesity is the major factor behind the diabetes heart disease and metabolic syndrome and cancer so you measure the waist circumference at the level of umbilicus or just below the umbilicus note it down with the help of measuring tape then you have a hip circumference at the maximum level 
and you divide waist hips waist circumference by uh, uh, waist circumference by hip circumference. Okay. So what WHO says that if the waist to hip ratio is more than 0.9 in male and 0.85 in female is obese. Okay. So even if your weight is normal, so mind you, the central obesity is the important thing. So the simplest way you can assess your physical health is by measuring the waist to hip circumference. Okay, and other measure is body mass index. So you take your weight in kilogram, you take your height in meter and divide, uh, divide your weight by height square. Weight divided by height in meter square is body mass index. And if it is more than 30, it indicates you are obese. But the most important thing is waist to circumference. So please note it down. And after finishing this workshop, measure your waist to hip circumference. And I'm gonna teach you how to make your waist to hip circumference normal. So what are the signs of stress? So there may be many signs like dry mouth, increase in heart rate, muscle ache, stiffness or pain, high blood pressure, frequent attack of cold or flu, worsening of existing illness like asthma or skin rashes, chest pain, headache, indigestion, constipation, stomach cramp, sweating, nausea, trembling, fatigue, weight gain or loss, mental sign like difficulty in concentration, making decisions. So you cannot take a decision, decrease in memory, mind going blank and racing, confusion, loss of sense of humor, decreased libido, inattention, bad dreams, behavioral sign like increased smoking, drinking, drug use, yelling, swearing, aggression, changes in eating habits, changes in sleeping habit, nervousness, emotional signs like anxiety, anger, irritability, impatience, short temper, frustration, worry, fear. So you may get this kind of signs in your life, but if these signs are present for a significant period of time and it interfere your social and personal life and professional life, then you have to think that you have a significant stress and you can measure your stress. And there is a stress of matter. You can give a, a numerical value. For example, if you have a normal day-to-day -day stress which increase your performance, then it may be a normal stress. But if you're nervous, you're fidgeting, there's sweating, feeling of failure, muscle tension and headache, there may be a moderate stress. But if you are shaking, there is a pounding heart, nausea, feeling of impending doom, then there is a severe stress, okay? So how to deal with this stress? Now we are going to discuss the stress management technique as far as how to deal at the organizational level and how to deal at a personal level, okay? So if there are people who are in a leadership role, they can note it down how to reduce stress for their employee and for all the people, how to reduce the stress in their life. So for uh, the organization level, we know that the, if there is an imbalance be between the ability of the people and the work, then there is a problem and there's a stress. So the organization can help to increase the skill level of the people by organizing various skill development workshop and seminars. Okay, then there is a other things which you can instill in a people working in the organization that that is the social relevance of the work now what happens i would like to share one story with you once a person went to visit a oxygen plant during corona pandemic so the workers were working there the one worker war, was very agitated state while working so that person went there and asked him what are you doing he said, don't you see I'm walking over here? Then he went to second person. He was in a very apathetic way. So he asked him, what are you doing? He said, I'm just filling the oxygen tank. Then he went into to meet a third person. He was singing. He was very happy while doing the work. This visiting person asked that person, what are you doing? He said, I'm a part of a big social work of saving the people during this corona pandemic okay so though they are doing the same work 
but their attitude towards seeing that work was different and it was affecting their behavior and their personal life as well first was very agitated state because he was working for the sake of it but the third person has a higher purpose of doing the same work so you have to have a you have to instill a social relevance of the work done by the people the people working in the organization may be doing some work but they may not be aware of the fact how they are affecting the whole humanity in a positive way if you if you give them the relevance social relevance then they would be motivated to do the same work so the organization may have certain values and certain principle and they should make the people aware of the social value of the work they are doing then they have to make the working environment safe and healthy okay so there was a, a steel company who was going bankrupt in united states so they changed the ceo of the company so when he was giving the talk to the shareholder the shareholder said he may be announcing certain things but what he announced that i am going to concentrate on increasing the safety of the working condition so all were very unhappy they thought that he is going to announce a lot of other things but he said ki i am going to concentrate on the safety of working condition making zero fatality and zero accident and what after one year that company's the profit increase double so if you make your working environment healthy and happy where workers are safe and happy then the work performance increases so make the safe and healthy working condition to decrease the stress and increase the work performance you have to give opportunity for the people working there to grow in their life okay so at the outset you have to tell them that if you are working then you may get this kind of promotion so growth path has to be told and there has to be encouragement and appreciation for the people working there next thing is you should not discriminate in the people working in a particular group so the all the people working hard should be compensated equally irrespective of their gender their age if they are working hard they should be compensated properly then job redesigning for example certain people may not like the job they are doing their aptitude their ability may be different so certain people may be have strength in a particular field they may be have weakness in other but uh, other particular field so we have to have a swat analysis of that particular what is is the strength what is the weakness what is the person is good at and then you have to redesign the job up the uh, a particular person so the stress level will increase and its job performance will increase then you can change the organization so it may be difficult but you have to change the organization means you have to communicate with people which is lower level you have to take them into cons uh, consideration in the decision making process as well okay so organizational change so that the bridges between the various people are broken there is a easy flow of information between different people people are allowed to fail people are allowed to give the opinion and innovative way so that they can fail because in the google it is a system that they have to do 70 to 80% official work and 20 to 30% things they want to do their own and this way the gmail was innovated this way the google uh, adword was innovated so there should be organizational change then there should be constant seminar to inspire the people to let them know about how to manage the stress the burnt out in a healthy way the way i am doing it today so this way the people would be equipped to handle the stress effectively then there there has to be change in the job role okay so you have to take which we have discussed that the job role can be changed depending upon the person's strength and weakness okay 
the organization should give paid leaves to the people to go compulsory vacation okay because during vacation they are re-energized and they come back and they give the performance so the paid leave for the vacation for the people working in the organization will help a long way to increase this decrease the stress and performance the networking the people should be allowed to network with the other colleagues they should have a support system and they have a proper positive environment among the colleague and the superior so that have a positive atmosphere the organizational climate should be supportive means if you have to take a break you can take a break if you have to take a nap while doing your work you can able to do it if you want to go to gym or swimming during work you should be allowed so it should not depend upon the quantity but the quality of the work produced by the certain people okay and the job should be fulfilling you should keep on giving motivating job to the people there you should celebrate the events like a birthday marriage anniversary you should celebrate the festival in the organization to take the people together you have to encourage the people working in your organization to take the part in social activity like educating the orphan people or swachh bharat abhiyan or doing uh, organizing blood donation camp and like that okay there has to be flexible working hour so these are the strategies which organization can implement to reduce stress but what you can do at an individual level to reduce the stress okay so this is going to be a life changing uh, strategies which we are going to discuss okay so if you manage your stress effectively and lead healthy app and more fulfilling life there are three basic principle first is do not allow stress hormone to stay in your body use it and have outlet to energy okay so on a lighter note there was a company and there was a employee named jack his boss was very atrocious boss he used to always scold jack that you are not doing your work properly you are lazy you are coming late i am going to fire you the jack become very angry and he has a strong urge to hit his boss with his shoes but due to the fear of losing job he used to control the anger but as the atrocity of the boss increased the urge of this jack to hit his boss with his shoes increased proportionately he become so disturbed that he stopped going work he stopped going to the hospital the worried parent took jack to the doctor doctor after listening the story said the remedy is quite easy you have a big portrait of your boss in your home and hit that portrait with your shoes five time before going to the office and five times after coming back from the office the jack said what difference it's going to make the doctor said just follow the the the, the, the advice i am going to give you so jack followed the same thing and after a few days his anger toward the boss reduced and his work efficiency increased after one month the boss called jack in his cabin and said jack congratulation i'm going to announce you as a employee of the month you have done a fantastic job in last month but before that give me the secret of your increase in efficiency in your job the jack said boss please don't ask the secret okay so what jack did he gave the outlet to his anger by hitting the shoes of his boss photograph but we can give outlet to our anger in a more civilized way so how you can give outlet to your anger by doing physical exercise okay so physical exercise is a very important thing to reduce your stress and give outlet to this stress hormone the second principle is a creative transformation i'd like to give an example to you if you are if we if i keep a cow dung at uh, outside your home what will happen it will emit a bad odor okay but if this cow dung is used as a fertilizer in a garden for the trees what will happen the trees will have flower and the flower will have fragrance so what we have done we have creatively transformed the odor of the cow dung in the fragrance of the flower similarly 
The stress has a lot of energy. If we creatively transform it, it can transform our life. So if you are stressed, you can transform this energy by developing hobby like singing, dancing, painting, and gardening. So increase your skill and transform your life. And the third principle is taking care of root. So I'd like to share one story with you. There was a queen and she had a very beautiful garden. Unfortunately, one day she become ill and she has to go to other city for her treatment. She was very worried about her garden. But her 10 year old son came and said, mother, don't worry. I'll take care of the garden. You take care of your health. So relief queen went to other city for the treatment. After one month, when she came back, she became very unhappy because all trees in the garden were dried up. There were no leaves, flower, and fruits. She scolded her son, but her son said, mother, please don't scold me. I used to work very hard from morning to night. I used to clean each and every leaves, flower, and fruits. I used to give water to each leaves, flower, and fruits, but I don't know why the trees become dry. Mother said, my dear child, the life of the tree is not in the leaves, flower, and fruits. The life of the tree is in its root. Have you taken care of the root? Have you given the water to the root? The tree would have taken care of itself and it would have had a leaves, flower, and fruits. My dear friends, we have forgotten our root. We are not only body and mind. We are body, mind, and soul. We have forgotten our soul. That's why the tree of our life has dried up. That's why there are so much of anxiety, depression, and so much of physical disorder because we have forgotten our spirit and our root. And how to take care of the root? By doing meditation. Okay, so these are the three principles which we can utilize in our life to reduce our stress and lead healthy and happy life. And now we are going to discuss certain principles short, in a short way, how to manage your stress. So first is a physical exercise. We all know that physical exercise is very essential for our physical and psychological health. And it is recommended that you should have 30 minute exercise every day for five days per week. You should have exercise to increase your stamina like aerobic walking, running, dancing, swimming, cycling. You can have exercise which increase your strength like going to gym or doing push up or squat or you can have exercise to increase your flexibility like doing yoga. So have the mixture of all this 30 minutes every day. You have to have a physical activity in each and every moment of your life. So we have become a couch potato. Instead of sitting, you can stand. Instead of standing, you can walk. Okay, so instead of using the lift, you can use staircase. Instead of using car, you can use bicycle or you can walk. If you're sitting in a couch or in a, a chair for one hour, just stand up and do certain walking, stretching for two to three minutes. So keep your body uh, moving because our body is meant to move. Okay. And we have become a couch potato because of the uh, industrial age. So keep your body moving and it will reduce your stress and increase your fitness. Second is a progressive muscle relaxation. When you're stressed out because of the work, when you go to home, just have a bath, just lie down and just relax. You can do a progressive muscle relaxation by contracting your muscle for five seconds followed by relaxation. And you can start from legs and go progressively upward. And when everything is relaxed, just lie down and just observe your breath. So if you do progressive muscle relaxation, all your stress will be gone when you come back from the uh, work. So I'm launching a poll now. Which is the best diet? Is it a low fat diet? It's a low carbohydrate diet or high protein diet or none of the above? Which is the best diet? Kindly participate in a poll. which is the best diet. And today I'm going to 
Saul, because we are bombarded with the advice that you eat low fat diet. Some says low carbohydrate. Some says Mediterranean diet. So some says high protein diet. And nobody knows what exactly one should do. So 71% said none of the above. 14% say it's high protein diet. And 40% says low fat diet. So you're absolutely right. So nutrition is an extremely important as far as physical as well as psychological health of the person is concerned. We, there has been a significant shift which the, we eat. Our primitive, our ancestor used to eat a lot of vegetable fruits, roots, legume and nuts, and only one person's whole cereal grain. But the modern man is eating less of vegetable, fruit, legume and nuts, only 23%, but 59% refined grain and 18% package and uh, uh, industrialized food and uh, artificial sweetener. And it has caused all this so-called obesity, diabetes, heart disease, cancer. Now there is a new theory of obesity and diabetes. And it is said that the obesity, diabetes and metabolic syndrome is because of the increased ins uh, insulin resistance. And this insulin resistance is because of the fattening carbohydrate we are eating, high protein diet we are eating, wheat, which is super carbohydrate because we are eating with the help of modern milling. We are removing fibers and we are using a powder of wheat which increase the glycemic index. We are eating a lot of fructose in a cold ring and a lot of industrialized food because of stress, cortisol is increased and we are eating less of fiber and which is causing this insulin resistance and which is causing this obesity, diabetes and heart disease and cancer. Okay. So which is the best diet then? Now the research has been done on the diet and it is found that the Eskimo who eat maximum fat, they have a healthy life. The chronic disorders are very less. The Maasai community eat most of the protein and less of vegetable, but they are absolutely healthy. The Okinawa people who have a highest lifespan in the world, which is, they are one of, in the blue zone. They eat most of the diet, which is a carbohydrate. Okay, so the research says that protein is not bad, carbohydrate not bad, fat is not bad, the, but the way we are eating is a bad. The processing, the addition of sugar, salt, what called as Western diet, which increase insulin resistance is a bad. So what one should eat? So the question to this complex question, the answer is very simple. You should eat food, not too much and mostly planned. Just write down this sentence, okay? You have to eat not much of food, homemade, freshly prepared food and it should be a plant-based vegetarian diet. So you can eat whole unprocessed food, colorful fruits, vegetables, salads, sprouted beans, cereal, pulses, brown rice, complex carbohydrate, but no simple sugar and no high fructose corn syrup, which is there in the packaged food and cold drinks. Avoid animal protein, eat maximum vegetable protein, eat fat in a natural form. Don't eat trans fat, which is present in the processed food. Eat, eat food which is grown organically, eat food which is pre-digested like your yogurts, eat sweets in a natural form like a fruits rather than having a fruit juice, okay? Avoid the caffeinated, sugarated drink, junk food, sweet, fried food, excess salt, dalda, ice cream, polished rice, margarine. Avoid packaged food because it contains lots of carbohydrates, sweet, uh, sugar, salt, it can a lot of coloring agent, preservative, which is bad, and it is packaged in a plastic food, okay? How we should eat? So we are eating more frequently. Actually, we should eat two to three times in a short window of eight to 10 hours so that the other 16 to 16 to 14 to 16 hours, our body get rest, our pancreas get rest, and our insulin sensitivity is maintained. And you have to do intermittent fasting. We have to drink at least 10 glass of water every day to keep us hydrated, okay? The next stress management technique is sleep. 
Now sleep is very essential. We all know that the mobile is discharged. We need to recharge our mobile. Similarly, our body is discharged during whole day. We are in tear rocker and which is healed during the night time. So sleep causes the healing of our body, digestion, certain hormone like growth hormones and melatonin is separated. The memory is consolidated and the fat is burned during sleep. So seven and a half hour to eight hour of sleep is very essential to decrease stress and in, increase overall health. Vacation is important, okay? We have to take the vacation, maybe one day every week, one, two to three days every month, two, one week every three months. You have to go out of your working and your daily routine, go close to the nature, be relaxed, and you would be regenerated and you would be re-energized. And you have to take vacation and a break when I, whenever you're working. Means if you're working for one or two hours, just take a break, okay? Just close your eyes, just observe your breath, or you take the deep breathing, you just do certain stretching. Just take a break after each, every hour when you're working. Because when you take a break, you are re-energized, then you can increase your uh, 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 focus and energy. It is found that the research was done in NASA and they found that if the astronaut are allowed to take a nap of 30 minutes, their work performance increased by 40%. So if you allow your worker to have a nap after having a lunch, their performance may increase and there should be right to disconnect. If you are, if you go to home, you are supposed to not in keep in contact with the other team members. And you should give right to the people working in an organization to have a right to disconnect. Music. If you are stressed out, just sing a song or listen to the soft music. It will calm down your stress response and it will activate your parasympathetic system. Journal keeping is also one of the important stress management technique. If you are stressed out, if you are facing problem, put it down in your, uh, in your diary, what problem you are having, what emotion you are undergoing, Give outlet to your emotions. Sometime you will find a solution to your problem and by giving outlet to your emotions, you will become light. So if you're having stress, put it down in a, a journal. Guided imaginary, guided imagery. Sometime the work and the stress become so overwhelmed that you want to go and get away from the working environment, but you cannot take a leave and go away, but you can, Take a leave, even if you are working in your office. How you can do? By doing guided imagery. Because mind do not differentiate whether it is actual phenomenon or you are imagining. So if you are stressed out, just close your eye and imagine that you are in a beach, you are at the bank of river, you're on a mountain top, and just experience what you are seeing, what you are listening, what you're smelling. Each use all the sensation and then you will be relaxed. So it is called as guided imagery. It is a temporary method to uh, remove from the stressful situation. Now, time management is very important. Less time reduce, uh, causes a lot of stress. So how to manage your time? So you have to have a goal in your life. So your goal should be smart. Smart means it is to be specific that I have to reduce five kg in one year. It has to be specific. M is measurable, five kg in one year. A means achievable. You cannot say, I will lose 10 kg in one month. It is not achievable. So you have to have achievable goal. R means you have to review every month whether you are achieving your goal and T means time bound. So have a smart goal. It should be long-term and short-term and in each and every sphere of your life, maybe personal, your relation, your social, financial, and spiritual. You have to have a to-do list ready before evening so that you can you know what you want to do in next day. You have to use 80-20 rule, it's called as a Pareto's rule, because 80% of effectiveness come from 20% of your effort. So you have to, you know, you should know that what are the effect, efforts which give maximum output and you have to concentrate on that particular effort. You have to categorize your task whether on the basis of urgency and important into this quadrant, it's called as time management quadrant. First quadrant is urgent and important. For example, somebody is having a heart attack. It's urgent and important to take him into the hospital. Okay. 
second quadrant is not urgent but important so this is the most important quadrant and it deals with whatever things i am uh, uh, teaching you today it's lead to the your health your prevention your relationship your planning recreation and health so you have to give 80% of time to this quadrant that is important and non urgent the third is uh, urgent and imp not important like uh, whatsapp mess uh, whatsapp notification facebook notification email notification it's urgent but not important and fourth quadrant is not urgent and not important like social media watching gossiping and tv watching so you have to take away uh, time from quadrant 3 and 4 and give quadrant time to uh, uh, time to quadrant 2 so that you don't have to give time to quadrant 1 okay so give time to this quadrant 2 if you have any work and you want to increase your time so you have to filter that any task through this funnel for example if you have task you have to ask yourself whether you can eliminate it okay so you have to have, you have to have the ability to say no then second is whether you can automate it for example you can do systematic investment plan rather than investing in every month third is whether you can delegate it okay so if you are able to eliminate automate and delegate then you will have a lot of time and if you cannot do it then you have to do it yourself so this is called as time multiplier funnel Second stress management strategy is prayer. Okay. So the Saint Kabir has, has said, Phal karan seva kare, kare na man se kaam, kahe kabir sevak nahi, mange chogana daam. So what we do, we pray to the God, that God, give me money, give me promotion. We always pray to ask from the God. But prayer is meant to express our gratitude to the God. God has given so much of, uh, so much to us, without uh, we deserving it so prayer has to express our gratitude so connect with the god and express your gratitude and those who pray are less stressed and they have a life increased lifespan laughter laughter is very essential part of our life when we grow older we laugh less and the physical and psychological disorder increase so laugh at yourself, laugh at your problem, laugh at your stress, laugh at your failure. Okay. Life is not to take it seriously. Okay. Laugh a lot. Watch uh, laughter movies, laughter serials, Mr. Bean, and laugh a lot and reduce your stress. Have a social support, not only in the office, but at your home. Okay. There has to be somebody with whom you can share with your stress, your problem. You can give outlet to your problem by sharing your problem. On a lighter note, once a friend of Sigmund Freud asked Sigmund Freud. Sigmund Freud was a father of psychiatry. The friend asked him, so many people come to you for counseling. They express so much of their problem to you. You don't become a man? Sigmund Freud said, yes, they came to me. They expressed their problem. But who told you I listened to it? Okay, so during counseling, the people express their problem, they give outlet to it, and then they get rid of that stress, anxiety. So there has to be somebody who can give uh, empathy, empathic ear to your problem. They can listen without judgment, and you can give outlet to your emotion. Also, you should have a social support who can help you financially, and who can help you in other way. Okay. So social support is extremely important. We have to do certain social work. Okay. So we have to do certain work where we do not expect any return. And it is found that those people who do volunteering, their level of stress is less, their physical and psychological disorder are less, and they live longer life. Okay. On a lighter note, once, uh, Saint went into the orphanage and tell the children, we have to do certain social work before 18. The children said, what kind of social work? The saint said, if, if uh, some house is burning, help the people take uh, 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 out of the house. If somebody has fallen in a well, take help that person to get away from the well. If certain uh, old lady is not able to cross the road, help her to cross the road. The children said, yes, okay. The next day, when the saint came, he asked the children, 
what kind of a social work you have done one children raised his hand and said i help one uh, old woman to cross the road he said excellent then second child said i help one old woman to cross the road the same said how did you got say uh, the old lady you know one day then third child raised his hand and said i also help a uh, old lady to cross the road the same said you all three got three old lady in one day the children said no 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 we got only one lady she was sitting at uh, outside the road she was reading a book but as you said that if we have to do a social work before eating we were very angry there was no house which was burning there was no man who was fallen well so we are very hungry so we forcibly lifted this lady and crossed her road she was very fighting but we lift her and help her to cross the road okay so we have to do the work where we do not expect any return so you can help other people with the your money your knowledge your time your energy and do volunteer work now communication with the partner is very important the miscommunication with the partner is a major cause of stress in life and it also affect family as well as personal life so i would like to give certain uh, uh, ideas how to deal with our partner you have to love your partner okay so how what do you mean by love love means l means listen carefully to your partner o means overlook the minor mistake v means have a positive vibration and e means encourage your partner second you have to appreciate our partner do lot of thing for us but we do not appreciate them so appreciate it on a lighter note once uh, mulla nasruddin went to his friend and said my wife always fight with me he said do you appreciate your wife's food he said no i don't appreciate then he said go and appreciate today so the mulla nasruddin went the wife serves him biryani he eat the biryani and said what a fantastic biryani is it i am eating one of the fantastic biryani i have never ate this kind of biryani the mulla nasruddin thought his wife would become happy but the wife pull out the stick and started hitting the mulla nasruddin he said i am appreciating you and why are you hitting me the wife said since last 10 year i am serving you the biryani but you have never appreciated me and today the neighboring the neighbor woman has given this biryani and you have finding no word to appreciate it okay so appreciate your wife consistently okay you have to help your partner in house chore you have to say sorry it is said that if you are wrong and you say sorry then you are ordinary man if you are doubtful whether you are right or wrong but still say sorry then you are wise man but if you are wrong you are right but still you say sorry then you are husband okay so use this word respect your partner okay give a lot of hug to your partner take her for the date write a love letter or take her for shopping okay to reduce the stress sometimes the stress is so overwhelming that you cannot do anything about it so go to other room and just cry and let the tear give outlet to your stress okay if you cry and you will feel light yoga is extremely essential to reduce stress and lead healthy life so integrate yoga in your uh, exercise regime in the morning pranayama the our breath and our health and our mind is interconnected when we are stressed we breathe fast and we breathe shallow when we are happy and we are at peace we breathe deep and slow so if you are stressed then just take a deep breath okay so count four while inhalation then just take a pause and count four while exhalation okay so there are various way of pranayama but this diaphragmatic breathing is very essential you can utilize when you feel stress and anger and just take a deep breath and your stress and anger will be reduced meditation 
meditation is very essential there are many types of meditation but what i follow is what is called as mindful meditation mindfulness is living in a present moment accepting the things as a bit as it is in a non judgmental way not thinking about past and not worrying about future okay so mindfulness help you to aware your present moment so how do you do mindful meditation i have a video on my youtube channel and i have taken a workshop on mindful meditation you can go and watch it but briefly i'll tell you that mindful meditation is you have to just close your eye and just observe your breath observe the breath at the nostril okay air coming in and air going out and when thoughts come in your mind just bring back your attention at the nostril so practice this mindful meditation every 2 to 5 minutes and you will become a stress free second stress management strategy is cognitive restructuring means our thought determine our emotions and it determines the way we deal with the stressful situation okay the thought if we have a positive and optimistic attitude to our life then the stress may be taken as a challenge but if we have a a uh, pessimistic attitude to our life then it will produce stress anxiety and depression i would like to share one stories with you one once a group of frogs were walk, uh, walking unfortunately three frogs fall in a well, in a deep pit they were jumping and trying to come out of the pit but they were not able to come out of the pit the other frog were saying the pit is too deep it is very difficult for you to come out of the pit you are as good as dead listening to this one frog immediately died second frog tried for a few jumps and he, he died but the third frog kept on trying kept on trying till that time other frog went away but this frog kept on trying he took rest again kept on trying kept on trying and came out of the pit when this frog went and meet the other frog the other frog were very surprised seeing this frog alive they said how did you alive how did you come out of the pit we told you that the pit is too deep it is impossible for you to come out of the pit this frog communicated by saying that i can't hear this frog didn't hear the negativity of other people and kept on trying and he came out of the pit while other frog listened the negativity and the time so there would be a lot of negativity during this corona pandemic that what is going to die we are going to get infected and all but have a optimistic attitude to our life take the challenges of your life positively as a way to uh the uh, 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 be successful then you will have a stress free and healthy life so have a optimistic life optimistic attitude to our life okay so if there is any negative events which occur in your life then you have to change the way you see toward that negative it is called as cognitive behavioral therapy for example it is called as a b c d a means activating event b is how you think about that activating event c is the consequences means what is the emotional and behavioral consequences and d is how do you dispute it for example if your boss give you some assignment then you will think that this boss is bad i am not able to do this assignment i am going to get stressful okay so this is your belief system then it will produce what it will produce stress and anxiety in your life so this is a natural way but if you dispute of your belief that that the boss has given me this project because the boss believe in my capability i can discuss the time frame of this project i can take the help of other people if i can do this job successfully i will be promoted so you are disputing your negative belief system and then you have a positive effect that you would be motivated to this job so if you have any thing any stressful situation so you have to follow this cognitive behavioral therapy by disputing your belief negative belief system by replacing in a positive way now 
there are certain things in our life which despite of doing all our efforts we are not able to change it then we have to accept it because we cannot see with our short sightedness what god has organized you in a future you may take certain things as a failure but the god may be opening a different door for you so you have to remember this sentence in your life it is called as a serenity pray what does it say it says god grant me a serenity to accept the things i cannot change courage to change the things i can change and the wisdom to differentiate between these two okay so you if there is a challenging situation if you have capability to change then take solve that problem change it if you have no ability then you have to accept it you have to change your belief system and take it positively huh? but you have to have a wisdom what you can change and what you cannot change so try to accept the things you cannot change you have to contented with your life okay we are not happy with what we have but we always try to find happiness which we do, which we don't have okay so on a lighter note once a old man gave advertisement in a paper the advertisement was about this rich man's daughter uh, getting married so he this rich man wanted his daughter to get married and he wanted a suitable uh, husband for them so after reading this mulla nasruddin went to meet this rich man the rich man said this is my 30 year old daughter if you marry her i will give 1 lakh rupees as a dowry this is my 40 year old daughter if you marry her i'll give you 2 lakh rupees as a dowry and this is my 50 year daughter if you marry her i will give you 3 lakh rupees as a dowry the mulla nasruddin thinks that as the age increases the dowry increases so he ask the rich man do you have any daughter who is 100 year old okay so we are not contented okay so we have to be content in your life if you are contented then you would lead a stress free and healthy life we should have a big goal but we should be contented with what we get okay so there is a difference between intrinsic value and instrumental value so this money the name fame your palace car they are all instrumental value but what you are all doing it is for love peace and happiness okay so we forget that we are living a life to be loved to live a life peacefully and happiness these are the intrinsic value and the other things like money name fame are instrumental value but we give most concentration to the instrumental value and forget about the intrinsic value so we should know why we are doing this thing okay and we have to balance it out happiness what is happiness i would like to share one story with you once a old lady was trying to figure it out which she has lost outside her home during evening time so the neighbor asked her whether we can help you so lady said yes i have lost a needle can you help me finding the needle out over here the people said the needle is too small can you tell me where you have lost the needle the old lady said i have lost it inside the home the people said are you mad you lost the needle inside your home and you try to find it out outside your home the old lady said it's a matter of a small needle i am a old lady i am a poor lady i don't have a electricity inside my home there is electricity outside that's why i am trying to find it out but you people have lost your happiness inside and you are trying to find it out outside okay so the happiness is inside not outside phenomenon and we try to find out in a money in a name fame and other things the happiness is internal the happiness is in the present moment the happiness is what you have happiness is in small thing not in a big thing okay happiness is in giving so happiness is there you have to go inside to find it out so happiness is in an internal phenomenon the last thing is a nishkam karma 
So in Gita, the Krishna advised Arjuna that karma nivadi karaste ma faleshu kadachana. So Krishna says, you have to concentrate all your energy to work and you should not expect any fruit. Okay. So does Krishna say that you should not have a goal in your life? No, you should have a big goal in your life. But once you set a goal, you have to concentrate all your efforts in your job. What we do, we always have eye on a goal and we do not concentrate on our job or our work at hand. And then that's why we fail. And we have always have expectation about the fruit. And whatever we get, we are always unhappy. That's why Krishna says, Ki, you were right is, is limited till doing work. The fruit is given by God and you have to accept it. So we have to have a goal, but have a concentration on your job, the work at your hand. And if you live the life like that, then you would achieve a bigger goal in your life. Okay. So I have discussed various work-life balance thing, how to uh, figure it out, how to balance the work and life. Now, what happens? The work-life imbalance is because we think that the work is not a part of a life. Okay. We think that the work is something which is dreaded. Okay. And that's created a problem in a work and life. Okay. So if you want to have a work-life balance, you have to treat the work as your life. Okay. So if you treat work as a dreaded thing, that's why the cognitive restructuring, the way you think the life is about. I would like to share one story with you. So once a teacher of mine said, what kind of a person you would like? Would you like to a person like a cooking gas cylinder or would you like a person to be a solar panel? So I asked him, what do you mean by that? So he said, when the gas in the gas cylinder is utilized, it become empty. So if you're working and if you work if you take the work as something as a load or something as a stress, then your energy would be exhausted while doing the work. You would be like a cylinder of a gas. You would exhaust your energy while doing work. And when you go to your home, you would be exhausted and you would not be able to give attention and time to your family. And that will create a work-life imbalance. But if you live a like, like a solar panel, means if you're working with a positive mindset, if you're working that you are doing a positively contributing to a society, for example, if I'm seeing a patient and if I'm thinking that I'm doing a, I'm bringing a positive change to this person's life, it will give you energy, the way the solar panel stored the energy. Okay, and when you go to home, your sonal panel would be charged and you will be able to give quality time to your family. Okay, so the work-life imbalance occur when you take the work as something which is dreaded, which is not enjoyable, and that creates a problem. If you take work in a positive way, in a passionate way, in a motivating and energetic way, then there won't be any work-life balance, imbalance, okay? So find out the work which you are passionate about, which gives you a purpose in your life, which gives you energy in your life, then there would be a work-life balance. So with St. Kabir's poem, I would like to end this talk. Saint Kabir has said, Bhini bhini binarich dariya. Bhini bhini binarich dariya kahe katana kahe ki bhani kon tar se bhini chadariya. Sevat sadar so maina lage thok thok ke bhini chadariya. Sovat chadar sur nar mani ode ode ki maili kar dini chadariya. Das Kabir Jatan Seodi Joki Tyodhar Dini Chadariya. So Saint Kabir said, the God has made our body in a very delicate way. Our body is very delicate. It's a miracle. We can see it's a miracle. We can hear it's a miracle. 
we can walk it's a miracle and by living the life in an ignorance in or indulgence in a stressful manner we just waste our life he says we have to live a life with awareness we have to live a life with awareness and if you live the life with awareness then you will live a life which is healthy happy and more fulfilling with that i would end this workshop i thank you all of us for attending this workshop now this workshop is open for question and answer session and for your comment thank you so much all of you for attending this workshop so this workshop is open for question and answer write your questions in chat box and i'm going to take it and afterward i am going to discuss about my community those who want to be a part of my community you can stay for five more minutes thank you dr magna thank you very much for interesting way to curb stress and giving us tips on how to deal with it thank you so much for the feedback write in the chat box your questions your comment okay joy is asked thanks how do you help someone realize that bad stress is affecting them okay so we have i have discussed about various signs and symptoms about stress if that signs and symptoms like they having headache body ache there is a disturbance in the concentration their eating habit their sleeping habit their performance in the work they are having palpitation they are having heart disease or increase in blood pressure they are having stress anxiety so these are the signs and symptoms which present consistently over a period of time and interfere his personal and professional life then you are to think that this person is having significant stress and he need to do something about it either to take counseling or to bring significant change in his personal life thank you dr samir i like session excellent thank you so much for the feedback i hope i hope i have answered your question jo right in the chat box any questions or your comment or your suggestion to manage the stress yes thank you again thank you so much dr samir has asked how to get rid of negative people okay so it is said that your life depends upon the people who are uh, who you are surrounded by if you want to become a slim then you have to get surrounded by people who are slim if you are surrounded by fat people you are 60 to 70% likely to become obese if you want to become happy and have a positive outlook then you have to get surrounded by positive people so it is your ability to say no okay so it is assertiveness whom you have to keep in contact with you have to decide and you should assertively tell the people no and in a polite way okay so ability to say no assertively in a polite polite way is the way to be to get rid of the negative people i hope i have answered your question dr samir thank you so much yes so write questions in your chat box
I'm uh, writing my email. If you have to have any questions, you can contact me later on. Write in the chat box about your comments and your questions. I hope you have learned a lot of golden nuggets from today, today's talk and you will utilize it to manage your workplace stress and bring work-life harmony. Thank you. Sukumaran ji has said, thank you for an excellent session. How do you know that the stress has a completely resolved? Is it only the physical symptoms? Now, see stress, I've told you the stress is our body's mental, physical, behavioral, chemical reaction to any perceived threat and demand. Okay, so the stress is in each and every it affects each and every aspect of our life. It affects our uh, cognition and it affects our physiological things as well. Okay. So if you want to know whether stress is reduced or not, you have to assess yourself, whether you are feeling calm cognitively, whether your heart is not pounding, you're relaxed, your body is not paining, and you are having a positive outlook to your life, then you have to think that the stress is gone. So stress is, it affects all cognitive, behavior, physiology, everything. So if you wanna know whether stress is reduced, then you should feel cognitively good, emotionally happy and your physio physiology like heart rate, respiratory rate, your muscle should relax, your heart rate should calm down, your respiration should be deep and slow. Okay. So I hope I have answered your question. Dr. Kishore has said, can you explain again Nishkam, uh, Nishkam Karma by Krishna? So uh, Krishna has said, it is a detached action. What happens, whatever action we take, we have certain expectation from action. For example, if you're watching a match, for example, you're watching a cricket match between India and Pakistan. And if you're Indian, then you will expect that if India win, then I would be happy. Okay. So you have some expectation. And if India lose, then you will become unhappy. But if you watch a match as a non-judgmental way, as a sportsman, just as enjoyment, then even if anybody wins, then you will not become happy or you will not become sad. You will enjoy the game. Similarly, when we take certain action, for example, if you are doing certain work and if we expect that if I do this work, I should get certain result. And if you don't get certain result, then you would be unhappy. That's why there is unhappy in our, in our life. That's why Krishna said, you have your right till your action, but you should not expect the out, output. You have certain goal that you may get certain things, but you should not be adamant that if I get certain things, I would be happy. And if I don't get certain things, I would be unhappy. This expectation of a job creates stress in our life. If we remove this expectation and concentrate on our job, then the stress would be reduced and we will be able to achieve our goal. So that's why the Krishna said, Ki, you have to have a detached action. Nishkam Karma means you have to detach yourself from the goal, uh, the output of your action. Thank you so much. I hope I have answered your question, Dr. Kishore, sir. Great, understood. Enjoy the journey and have no expectation. Yeah, so you have to have a goal. APJ Abdul Kalam has said, you have to have in his book, Fire of Wing, he has said that you have to have a big goal in your life so that the God will give fire to your wings. Okay, so you have a lot of goal. But 
once you have set the goal once you know what action has to take you have to take action then you have to concentrate on your action if you concentrate on your action you will achieve the goal and once you achieve goal your aim is not to reach the top of the mountain you cannot say that if i reach the top of mountain i would be happy the journey has to be your goal of life you have to enjoy the journey while journey you may fall down you have to get up you will fall down you will take the help of other people take their advice get up and you will keep on walking toward your goal you will enjoy the, your uh, life as well you cannot say i will achieve 1 million dollar then i would be happy if i mansion i would be happy if i buy mercedes i will be happy no yes that may be a goal but while achieving that goal you have to enjoy that journey as well the happiness is not at reaching the mountain it is while doing the journey thank you so much if you have any questions or comment so i would like to just share within a two minutes about my community i have this health and happiness community i have a certain code of honor that the member of the community strive to achieve holistic health they strive to live a life of mindfulness and awareness they protect the environment they have a leadership in their own life they are a torch bearer to the society they have a constant daily improvement in their life and they contribute positively to a society so why did, did i started community five years back my life was in a bad shape i completely stressed and burnt out i had put on 10 kg of weight and i uh, I, i just started looking much older than my chronological age then i stopped i introspected my life i read hundreds of book on spirituality self help and health i formulated certain principle i implemented it and it completely transformed my life i lost 10 kg of weight my work efficiency improved my relationship with my spouse parents and my colleague improved and i started disseminating this knowledge by conducting various workshop seminars webinars and i am on a mission to inspire 2 million people about stress chronic disorder and how to manage it effectively so as to lead healthy happy and more fulfilling life so i have conducted hundreds of workshop for various corporation organization colleges on various stress related uh, various health related aspect like stress management mindful meditation healthy diet how to increase the longevity longevity how to increase boost the immunity during corona pandemic i have published a book on amazon o stress give me a break which has become international best seller i have published another book a seven powerful secret to manage stress during corona pandemic so my journey was like this and five years back i have fallen in this valley of anxiety depression and other things and with after reading books and modifying my life i came out of this valley so i want to act as a bridge for the other people so that they can help with the help of my knowledge so that they do not have to fall in this valley or if they are in this valley they should come out of this valley as early as possible so that's why i have started this community so if you are stressed out if you have chronic disorder or if you want to achieve holistic health you want to increase your professional life personal life family life and want to lead healthy happy and more fulfilling life then you can join my community because i am expert and love to do one to one coaching i worked with corporate entrepreneur industry leader to help them manage stress with various stress management technique so that they can achieve awesome health and they get an exponential growth in their professional life i also conduct a workshop for corporation and organization and i provide my audience with the tools to empower them to reclaim their health and attain success i have online digital course on stress management as well so if you want to uh, book my 
one to one coaching or workshop for organization you can contact me on this email or you can contact me or you can uh, visit my website www.drsunilsable.com or you can contact me on 9689011709 or you can contact me on this email address so many people has attended uh, my workshop and my coaching system and they have got excellent results so keep in touch with you uh, I, i would expect to keeping in touch touching with you if you have any doubt or questions through my email which i have given and i thank all of you from bottom of my hand be, bottom of my heart from for being here on this workshop thank you so much if there is any question comment write it down otherwise we are going to end this session thanks great session we'll be in touch thank you dr kishore sir for the feedback so be in touch thank you so much and i'm going to end this session and tune in my next session i keep on conducting this kind of session every 15 days on various health related topic last time i did a session on mindful meditation healthy diet how to increase health span and life span how to boost the immunity during corona pandemic the physical and psychological effect on children during corona pandemic and how to manage it so keep in touch and keep attending so that we can have a positive interaction thank you so much i'm going to end this meeting again thank you